What's up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Toyota Yaris courtesy of Hanover Toyota in Hanover, PA. And so the Yaris has been around for quite a while before in sedan form. However, 2020 marks the first year of the Yaris hatchback. Therefore, I had to check it out. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 Yaris. First one being the L sedan starting at $15,650. LE sedan for $16,750. XLE sedan for $18,750. LE hatchback starting at $17,750 and the XLE hatchback, the one we have today, starting at $18,750. And so regardless of trim level, the power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, putting out 106 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 103 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. That power of course being sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six speed manual or a six speed automatic. By the way, I should also mention that six speed manual that's actually only available on select trim levels being the L and LE sedans only. So if you were to go for a hatchback, you only have the six speed automatic, just in case you were curious there. But all in all, MPG numbers come in at approximately 32 in the city, 40 on the highway. That is a lot of MPGs on the highway, you guys. Taking, of course, regular unleaded fueler 87 octane. So before we do any kind of acceleration here in the Yaris, I first did want to mention there are some drive modes. There's essentially normal, which is where the car defaults to, and there is sport. And by the way, that little toggle switch is located directly behind the shifter there. So just slide it up if you want that sport mode and then slide it back down if you want to go back into normal. And so when I just pushed it up into sport mode there, it did immediately downshift. So it does hold the RPMs at a little higher level, giving you more power on demand there. Also just the throttle response and actually the steering sensitivity as well. And so having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's do a quick little acceleration here in the 2020 Yaris. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. Here we go. Go, go. <laughs> Actually, not that bad. I wasn't expecting that kind of acceleration out of 106 horsepower, but this is such a small car. It's a light car, so kind of feels like a go-kart, honestly. As far as acceleration goes, that's honestly just fine. Probably not gonna have the passing power you want at highway speeds, but at low speed acceleration, it's kind of fun. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find power assisted ventilated disc brakes in the back, nine inch rear drum brakes. And some people will say, well, why doesn't it have four wheel disc brakes? A lot of subcompact cars do not. And you guys will probably find that if you start looking into it, but four wheel disc brakes is nice, but honestly, for the size of the RS, you really don't need them. So as far as braking feel goes, it has been perfectly fine for me today. Certainly no issues whatsoever with bringing this one to a stop. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, a torsion beam rear suspension. And as far as the steering feel goes, I kind of like it, especially in that sport driving mode, because again, it adjusts the weight of the steering wheel when you put it in that sport driving mode. But in that sport driving mode, the steering feel is actually quite nice. Certainly no issues there. Touching on ride quality a little bit um you guys probably know that's kind of the trade-off with smaller cars you do feel a bit more of the road but probably no issues for me i have a lowered mustang on 20 inch wheels so i feel a good bit of the road as it is and i would say this is probably better than that quite honestly so for me it wouldn't be any issues and as far as road noise goes that is a little more pronounced as well again smaller cars you're going to have that all in all when it comes to suspension and handling the steering feel is really where it's at i do love the steering feel on this 2020 Yaris here that we have. But now let's make our way to visibility as I adjust my mirror here. I should have done that before. I can see perfectly fine. And again, I have the hatchback today. So sedan is probably gonna be just as good, but I can see perfectly fine out the back. Certainly no issues there. Did wanna also mention rain sensing windshield wipers come standard on the XLE trim level. So that is a pretty cool feature. It's kind of like automatic headlights. Essentially, once the Yaris picks up that is starting to drizzle, it automatically puts on the windshield wipers so you never have to worry about it. So one less thing you have to worry about so you can focus more of your attention on actually driving and enjoying the drive. So that's definitely a plus and kind of a safety feature in itself. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's go ahead now and check out the exterior of this new 2020 Toyota Yaris hatchback. All right, you guys, here it is, the side profile of the 2020 Toyota Yaris hatchback. I actually 
I believe I like it better than the sedan, but either way, I think the front is actually the best part of the RS here. Up front, you're gonna have a large black mesh front grille, of course, and take a look to the sides when it comes to the headlights. As far as the design goes, it actually kind of reminds me of the Infiniti Q50, which is a good thing. It kind of has that downward facing angled headlight. So in my opinion, it gives a little more aggressive appearance there. So it looks good there. Halogen headlights will come standard for the L and LE trim levels. LED headlights are actually gonna come with the XLE trim levels. So therefore that is actually what you're looking at right now. Automatic feature is gonna come with those LED headlights as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they're gonna turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights, also standard with that. And we'll say if you go with the LE trim level and up, you're gonna find fog lights incorporated into that lower portion, lower corners of that front grille. I thought that was kind of an interesting placement rather than putting it actually on the body they incorporated it into the grill. I kind of like it actually, it's different. And so anyways, making your way to the side on this one, body colored power adjustable side mirrors will actually come standard on all trim levels and they will be heated with LED integrated turn signals if you were to go with one of the XLE trim levels. Body colored door handles are actually also gonna come standard and this is something I don't always mention in my reviews, but I do on lower price vehicles because a lot of times with entry level cars, they will actually be a black plastic. So it is kind of nice that body colored door handles come standard even on the base trim level of the R, so that's a good thing. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 15 inch steel wheels will come with the L trim level. 16 inch dark gray split five spoke alloy wheels are gonna come with every other trim level and that of course is what you're looking at right now. And they actually look really good on this one, I will say that as well. Then making your way to the back, if you go with the LE trim level and up, whether it be the sedan or the hatch, you will find a rear spoiler back there. Integrated brake light, of course, with the hatchback version. Rear window wiper, again, with the hatchback, that's always useful. And just below that rear window wiper, you will find trim level badging back there as well. And for anybody who's curious, Toyota does typically put LED lights on just about all of their vehicles but not this one, <laughs> just in case anybody was wondering. But anywho, just below it all, I like this too. Single exhaust outlet with a chrome tip actually for all trim levels, and it is exposed. A lot of manufacturers these days are tucking it up underneath, and in my opinion, just does not look as good as the good old fashioned exposed exhaust outlet with the chrome tip. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> All right, so now since we are around back, as far as opening that rear trunk, it's pretty simple. You simply just lift up underneath there. That is how you're gonna get that hatch open. Once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna differ a little bit between the sedan and the hatchback. Sedan comes in at 13.49 cubic feet. Hatchback actually gives you a little more, coming in at 15.86 cubic feet. Either way, regardless of whether you go with the sedan or the hatchback, you will find a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for a good bit of extra space there if you needed it as well. But make your way to the rear legroom. That is gonna come in at 34.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And for those rear passengers, there are a couple of cup holders within their doors, of course. No fold down center armrest with cup holders or anything like that. Really, it's too small of a car for that anyways. I did kind of like that there were chrome door handles on the interior though, including those rear door handles. So I found that pretty cool. But anyways, making our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats will come with the L and LE trim levels, manually adjustable leatherette seating with the XLE trim levels. That is definitely a pretty cool feature, especially considering it's a subcompact car. So that's pretty cool. And actually the seating was very comfortable. It's bolstered pretty darn well for a subcompact car. It really holds you in place around the turns, which is a good thing because the Yaris is kind of fun to throw around the turns if I'm being honest. There. So yeah, as far as the seats go, I actually really liked them, but taking a look at the steering wheel now, tilt and telescoping steering wheel will come standard on all trim levels and will actually come leather wrapped if you were to go with one of the XLE trim levels. Then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It actually kind of reminds me of a Mazda key. To be honest, everything is all on one side. You got your Toyota logo on the one side, lock, unlock. And as far as starting this one, there is a push button start if you were to go with the LE or XLE trims. So essentially the L is the only turnkey ignition left as far as the Yaris goes at least. But so all I'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located kind of in the bottom right hand corner of the gauges kind of so to speak but anyways once started up tachometer is going to be 
all the way on your left in digital form. Speedometer is front and center, and again, there is a digital display to the right as well. On the right side, it's gonna give you your outside temperature as well as how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which apparently for us is not too many left here. But so then touching on overall interior quality, I do kind of like that chrome trim. It kind of ties around the air vents, then kind of a metallic aluminum look just above the passenger side glove box that ties together the air vent in the center as well. So that's a pretty cool design there. Got some leatherette finishes above the glove box with some blue stitching. And by the way, that blue stitching carries on to the doors as well. A lot of really nice finishes actually, surprisingly for a Yaris. So definitely impressed there. Just in front of the shifter, you're gonna have a 12 volt power outlet, two USB charging ports, and a little cubby area to store whatever you'd like. Then just behind the shifter, there's actually a circular dial and buttons to help control what is on that tech display. Now I'll get more into the tech display later because it is a touchscreen display, but you can use the circular dial and buttons, which actually may better help you when you're actually driving because it is somewhat of a reach to that tech display when you're actually driving, which is probably why they put it there without a doubt. But anyways, just behind that two cup holders and then a small little cubby area surrounded by a carbon fiber plastic-ish look. Overall, honestly, interior quality though surprised me. A lot of very high-end finishes. I love the blue stitching. I love that they carried the leatherette finish above the glove box and it ties together right into the center of everything. It's a really actually nice finish for the Yaris. Well done, Toyota there. Overhead sunglass holder. I don't want to forget to mention that on the roof as well, but making our way now to the tech display, seven inch color touchscreen display for all trim levels actually. And again, you can use the touch screen or you can use the circular dial and buttons behind the shifter. Either way, it gives you Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is a new feature for the 2020 Yaris. So therefore, if you have a smartphone, all you need to do is simply hook it up to the Yaris and that gives you free navigation through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there. And there's a couple other compatible apps, of course, as well. And of course, you can also check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, every single trim level will give you that same six speaker sound system so therefore that is what we have today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio here see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one actually a decent amount of bass quite honestly for a six speaker sound system good bit of clarity honestly this isn't that big of a vehicle so the sound system six speakers is more than enough a lot of cars this size will give you four this one gives you six so that's a plus in my book but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the yaris in reverse you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side and side curtain airbags will come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also back there rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system will come standard but also the Yaris is going to add to that a low speed pre-collision system, which operates at speeds of up to 18 miles per hour or less. So essentially when the driver presses the brakes, the braking system will provide additional brake pressure to help avoid a collision when the system feels that one is imminent. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. I'm sure I got some wicked glare coming at me with the sun right now, but nonetheless, feel free to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold